Well, here we are again, ready to get to work. Um, it's been a while since I've been out here and uh, worked on Wanda, so looking forward to getting stuck into it today. I think the first thing I probably need to do is have a bit of a, a clean up and organisation because, uh, as you can see, I'm getting a heap of stuff uh, piled up on this um, settee berth over here. So I probably should go through this and try and um, try and organise this a bit more. So basic, basically everything's where it was last time I came here. Um, actually, there's a couple other things I've done. First up, I've um, trimmed back this uh, headlining from the, uh, the underside of the deck here so that we could get a, a good look at that. So I've just cut that off square and I've kept the two pieces down here so that I can use as, as a template to, um, to put the new headliner back on once this work is finished. So yeah, I've just cut that straight so it should be easy to patch together afterwards. Well, I've got some cool new things over here that I need to sort out. Um, got some new toys. Got this um, full face mask for once I get down to grinding the fiberglass back. Um, I imagine I'll make quite a, a bit of mess. Um, so far I've just been using a small disposable face mask for when I'm um, cutting into fiberglass. And that's been okay, but as soon as I wear these goggles on top, what I found is, is they fog up pretty quickly. Um, but all the reviews for this type here said that it was really good and they don't um, fog up. So um, yeah, so that should be quite good. Got some tape. Um, okay, so now I've got some power, which is good. I should be able to um, run this out of the boat and, um, and get some power going. So basically, I just bought this, which is 50 meters of um, what they call pond cable. So it's um, three core flex, uh, 2.5 millimeter, I think, but with this sort of heavy duty rubber exterior which means I can run it outside and if it's um, a bit wet out there it should be fine. So I bought 50 meters of this and I bought a um, four gang deck here which I've hooked up. And then I've got this the uh, 240 volt socket out here which is the waterproof um, socket which goes into the mains outside. Before I um, before I switch it on though, I need to test that I've got the polarity right again um, because I wired this up and then I wanted to double check. Um, but I'm not sure out of which out of these two is neutral and which one's active. So I'll just need to do a, a test with the multimeter before I, I use that. I've actually got this one over here. So what I can do is just run the multimeter on these um, these poles and work out which one is neutral and which one is active. So I can do that test on this and then just confirm that I've actually wired this up the right way. And then I can um, hook that up and I've got some power. So I've also got a halogen work light now. Uh, 230 watts I think so last time I was trying to shoot some video it was a bit dark that should make a lot things a lot easier yeah okay so let me tidy this up first and then I'll get started um, I just wanted to provide another update on um, the work that I've done over the past few weeks um, since I did that initial uh, walkthrough video and um, initial investigation of Wanda and listed out what projects um, would need to be done at that point. So I guess it was about three or four weeks ago. Um, and on one hand, it feels like nothing much has really happened because I've not started doing the repairs. Um, but looking back, I guess a lot has been done. Um, but it's all around investigation and, and um, having a careful examination of the damage to try and 
come up with a plan for repairs and that that's taken a long time I guess and um, I'm sort of at the end of that stage now which is good so in terms of uh, just recapping on what's what I've done over the last three to four weeks I guess the main thing is all of the port side shell is exposed now from the navigation station uh, all the way through to the heads so um, that took quite a, a bit of time to dismantle the furniture and move everything out so we could get a good look at that so that took some time um, there's been two two surveys done by David the surveyor I've got who's going to do the plan for how we should repair this um, so he came out the first time and spent about four hours um, and then he asked me to remove more of the uh, cabinetry because he wanted to have a look in the heads uh, which I've done um, and he also wanted to get more of the teak deck uh, removed all the way up to the tow rail so that he could inspect that um, so he's done his two visits now and he's um, cr uh, written up the report um, and basically given us an approach to what needs to be repaired and, and how we should do it. So I guess there's probably three or four sort of major fiberglass GRP repairs that we need to look at um, and three of those are sort of um, areas of repair that I wasn't expecting that have just um, become apparent since I've taken charge of Wanda. So I guess the first one is just the exterior hull damage which was always sort of you know well documented and well photographed in the survey so I was expecting that and um, I was prepared for that work to be done. So um, what Martin will do because I, I don't want to do any of this because it's it's just going to look right it's all above the water line it's all on the exterior of the hull and you need a really careful eye to refill it, refair it and get a perfect sort of finish so um, I'll pay for somebody to do that because I want it to look good. Um, so with that there's two or three areas where Martin will need to um, grind back the, the gel coat and feather back the fiberglass um, and then lay it up with chop strand matting um, and then fair it and put new gel coat on. So that's the piece that we were expecting to have to do anyway. Um, but I guess some things that have come up that we I wasn't expecting was the um, potential beaching that um, it looks like Wanda might have had because what we've noticed when we scrape back the anti-fouling underneath the, the hull right down the bottom is there's just all these patches of filler um, and by where this filler is, is lying, um, it seems like that would have been where Wanda was healed over if she was beached on her side. Um, and that kind of makes sense because the fuel tank in the, the bilge was leaking and it was kind of really hard to, to, to um, guess what could have caused that because you know the tanks don't leak, they're, they're built really well and then they, they don't move. Um, so perhaps if she was beached um, and lying on her side that may have uh, disturbed the fuel tank and perhaps caused a, um, a crack. Um, so what we'll need to do for that part is to basically pull back all that um, filler and then possibly uh, lay up with fiberglass again depending on how deep the filler is and how secure it is. Um, so basically the uh, approach that David's recommended is to have the whole entire hull uh, grip blasted. Um, and the intention of that is to remove all the sort of layers of anti-fouling and also try and shake out as much filler as possible. Um, so any filler that's not really uh, well done or well secured should come out with this grip blasting. And then we'll get to see more of um, the damage underneath which may have been caused by beaching. Um, and again that will either need to be sort of feathered back and ground back and then relayed up. Um, depending on how deep it is and how much that filler comes out. So uh, that, that's the second sort of part of the process that I wasn't really planning for originally. Um, okay and then in terms of all the interior work, um, all along the shell where the, uh, the frames have, have delaminated from the hull, um, that needs to be repaired. So 
Um, the approach there is to basically um, cut off all that loose tabbing where it's come away, so grind all that loose tabbing back. Um, and then the part of the frame that's actually lifted off the, the hull, that'll be cut away completely and removed. And then what we're going to do is we're going to relay or reform the frames with um, foam. I, it's some sort of foam material that they're using for the um, the frames and the stringers and the Halberg Rassies. So I probably need to find out what sort of foam to use. But my understanding is we're going to reform the, the frames with, with the foam base and then laminate over that um, and bond that back to the, the shell to basically restore the way the frame should have been. Um, and that should then um, give back all that structural support that's missing at the moment because they've all sort of come away from the shell and they're not providing that support. Um, now with that work I'll try and do as much of that um, myself as I, as I can um, depending on how much support I get from Martin or how much instruction I get, the, the sort of deal that we've got is I'll do as much as of the um, manual preparation as possible and then he'll sort of finish off the more difficult parts, you know, which is a pretty fair um, solution because it will save me a bit of money. Um, so that's the interior. Um, the other thing is the, the deck and the deck to hull joint. So there's a couple of issues there that need to be repaired and um, again the proposal from David the surveyor was um, for that crack along the tow rail to basically grind that crack back and open up that crack and feather it back so that that can be uh, built up with layers of chopped strand matting again and, and refiberglassed and then the deck to hold joint needs to be lifted um, and then fill that sort of cavity with epoxy and then re-secure that back down with self-tapping screws and, and realign that. Um, so I'll need to do a little bit more preparation for that. I need to take off all the teak cap railing, although a lot of it's busted and missing already. Um, and just remove a little bit more of the teak deckings to expose all that. Again, if I do all the preparation, then um, you know the cost will come down because Martin can just do the sort of more difficult parts. Um, so that's that's going to be the process. So um, first up is to get the whole hull grip blasted, um, and then start grinding back fiberglass and um, preparing um, the interior to get the the frames relayed and the exterior hull um, refed and reglassed. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what we find. Uh, around the turn of the bilge where all that uh, filler is evident. It'll be interesting to see what happens there. So yeah, just about to um, to start all that work, which is exciting. Um, finally, you know, we can actually do some repairs rather than just look at everything and, um, and sort of analyze what the problems are and what needs to be fixed. So today, what I'd like to do is I just found one more place where there's a bit of delamination and that's around the nav table and it's a little bit tricky to get to so I think I need to actually um, um, disassemble the navigation table cabinetry um, just to expose that part of the core, um, the shell, sorry, so that's, you know, we can get to work on that. So hopefully I'll start that soon, maybe after a bit of lunch. Well, it's time to go home, and um, I've had a pretty good day today. I've done quite a lot. Um, I've done a lot of tidying up as well. Um, so basically, I've just organised things a little bit better. I've got basically back here is just all the, the power tools that I use, um, you know, relatively often. And then in this locker, I've got other power tools like. Um, my planer and belt sander and other bits and pieces that I don't use so frequently. So the idea is to kind of put stuff away so that I've got a bit more space here um, before everything was piled up on the settee. So now the good thing is I've got a place to sit, which is important.
because uh, sometimes you need a break. So I've got most of my sort of go-to tools down here now, just the things that I need all throughout the day. Then I've got a second tool case back here, which has got sets of things like sets of files or sets of spanners, sets of screwdrivers, etc. Um, that's my doormat. Need to get something proper doormat. It's great that I've got power now as well. So I've got a power board here, and I've got my batteries being charged, and I can charge my phone and play music. So that's great. Um, and then I've just got sort of the rest of the tools that I use quite often up here. So basically everything that's not used all the time is put away. So I've got this space here. Um, yeah, power's great. Um, I don't trust any of the 240 volts in this bike yet, so I'll just use this power board until I've had a chance to go through all the wiring and um, check it all before I use the shore power. Right, well, that's about it. Um, next time I hope to start to prepare for the um, grinding. I need to start to put plastic everywhere to cover up the interior so that I can start using the angle grinder uh, which will make a big mess so before I start to make that mess I need to cover everything up and then probably just need to finish marking out all these areas that I need to grind back as well. Alright well thanks for watching.